Okay. So to help decrease anxiety, we can talk to God. To help decrease anxiety and depression, I can talk to myself. Going back to a story at the beginning, if I had been talking to myself and recognizing even what I was feeling, that's even that second one. What am I feeling right now? And what do I need? If I'd been having that conversation with myself, I would have realized I was feeling anxious. I was feeling overwhelmed. I was feeling exhausted. Um, what did I need? I needed to communicate it to that to my kids. I needed to take that nap and just catch my breath. I needed to stop pushing myself beyond the limits. Okay, so back to following my notes, talking to myself, I can ask, what kind thing can I do for myself? Again, what am I feeling right now? What do I need? Who can I reach out to for support? This is huge. I know for myself, when I find someone safe to talk to, sometimes nothing changes about the situation, but just being heard and validated can be so very powerful. You do have to be mindful, though, of who you're talking to. Sometimes people may just not have the people skills yet to know how to validate you and listen to you. But again, for myself, for my clients, for my friends, for so many people I hear, just talking about it makes me feel better. John Cloud and Henry Townsend share a story of two men they were very prominent businessmen. They both lost their jobs. As a result, both of them, their wives left them. One of the gentlemen got with his friends and he made them promise him that each one of them would take turns daily taking him to lunch. And they had to pay for it. The guy didn't have any money. At the end of a year, this gentleman was back on his feet and was doing well. The other gentleman did not reach out for help. He was not talking with anyone. I think the story goes, he actually slipped in to uh, alcohol and became an alcoholic after a year. So support is so important. God's made us for relationships. So who can support you? Uh, counselors. Coaches, life coaches, you know, church groups. Oftentimes there are small groups that we can attend at church. And who are friends? Sometimes maybe someone who's not close by, but that you can talk to over the phone. I have several friends and a cousin. We've been using the Marco Polo app, and I am amazed and how using that app and living a video and communicating is actually making me feel like I've interacted in person with these individuals. So you can think outside of the box for that as well. Uh, this next one is, what is my rhythm? I learned this from Jerry and Pete Scazzaro. They wrote a book. It was originally called, I Quit. Then it was Jerry learning to quit things that, that were really sucking her life of having joy and peace and were creating anxiety. So she tells a story of, of learning what your rhythm is. Jerry's grandmother could decide in an afternoon that she wanted to have a dinner party and she could invite 20 people to her dinner party. Jerry thought she was supposed to be like her grandmother and be able to pull something off like that. But what she realized is it was really kind of creating bitterness. She had worked all afternoon. They were hosting a gentleman from out of town. She worked on this amazing meal. When the gentleman got there, he had already eaten and just wanted coffee. So she really felt frustrated and probably bitter. What she learned is that wasn't her rhythm to make all that food. Her preference would be to buy a, a store-bought dessert and serve coffee, but really interact and visit. So learning what your rhythms are and paying attention to, is this how God made, made me? Am 
I function or am I trying to be somebody else and function in their rhythm? Oftentimes that helps me. And if I'm anxious or feeling overwhelmed, even down, asking myself that question, what's my rhythm here and functioning in that has helped me. Okay, so here's some brainstorming ideas. Um, when I have felt at the end of my rope, I have done all of these. Taking an Epsom salt bath. And I was taught just to add up some drops of olive oil and or essential oil, and that just becomes a lovely experience. Music. Music is so powerful. You can play peppy music, relaxing music, worship, etc. There's all kinds of different genres. You know, even as I'm looking at these notes, I'm reminded in Colossians about giving thanks singing in hymns. It's amazing what God tells us in his word to do. Of course, it doesn't tell us in there, but we are so fearfully and wonderfully made by giving thanks, by singing. We are actually releasing what I would call happy chemicals in our brain, dopamine, etc. I can't even remember the, these great chemicals off the top of my head, which helps fight off cortisol. Cortisol is what we release into our brains when we're stressed. So in God's word, just giving thanks, listening to music, playing music can help dopamine and those happy chemicals that make us feel better. I've recently discovered JJ Heller. She has their a podcast series called Instrumental. Those have been such a blessing to me. I'm listening to other people's stories and how God has worked in their lives. Matter of fact, again, I was going through a really tough time. I was by myself and I thought, what can I do? I listened to her podcasts and they really encouraged my heart. In Revelation, we read that they overcame the enemy by the blood of the lamb and the power of their testimonies. So hearing other people's stories who've been in really hard places is a way to encourage ourselves and to feel more hope. Uh, I've listed her podcast, but you know, what Bible teachers can you listen to to find encouragement? TED Talks. I mean, there's just endless possibilities of things that you can do to be kind to yourself when you're down, things that you can listen to. Uh, Kim Avery, I'm in her group coaching. Uh, she shared this about comparing. You know, comparing can really add to feelings of hopelessness, despair, and depression for me. Uh, but she shared, you know, when you compare, remember that what God's done in someone else's life, he can do in yours too. So maybe somebody does look joyful and I'm feeling on down and out. I can remember, you know what? If God can give that person joy, he can give it to me too. So I encourage you not to compare, but if you catch yourself or if I catch myself, I'm going to remember that God is capable of doing those things in my life too, and even request them. As I said there in my notes, it can make you feel despairing um, when you compare like there's something wrong with me. So instead, do the Kim Avery trick. Okay, journaling with God, that's something kind that you can do for yourself. You know, just writing out, here's what I'm feeling even pause and listen to what he says back to you about how he sees me, hears you, how he understands what he wants to do. Again, he loves us. He cares for us. Um, the kind things that we can do for ourselves are getting in nature, experiencing beauty. You know, we're getting ready to enter into colder months, but sometimes just even... Again, going for a drive, seeing trees. I was at the Walmart parking lot today in the Church of the Yukon, working on my notes for you guys. But I looked up and I saw this tree. The sky was so blue. I just treated myself to a few minutes of just staring at that tree and looking at the sky. And it really brought me pleasure. 
kind of things we can do for ourselves are play. In the American culture, we are just stretched beyond capacity. And so sometimes just stopping to play. You know, it could be a jigsaw puzzle. The other day, I played solitaire with real cards on the table. Someone I recently listened to said, do real things and limit your screen time. So being kind to myself or doing things that, that are soul-filling. Again, from Jerry Scazzaro, I heard, do those things that bring you joy. Give yourself permission to do those things and take a break from work and making decisions and planning, etc. 16 minutes of doing nothing. Dr. Caroline Leaf talks about that. You know, just sitting there, staring at the sky lying on your bed, whatever it is, give yourself 16 minutes, not looking at your phone, your computer, anything, not talking, just 16 minutes of nothing it can be so rewarding and kind to ourselves. You know, it's interesting, sometimes 16 minutes is really long when you're trying not to do anything. Sometimes even just a couple minutes of just closing my eyes and breathing can be helpful. Put on comfortable clothes. One of my personal favorites, take a delicious nap. Movement. Movement is so good to help us feel better. I know when I lost my dad, I was oh, going to even tear up. That's been several years ago. But after he died, I, I just went for a walk. And I mean, I was hurting so badly, but just that movement helped me to feel better. Also, there again, got into nature. I, I saw a bird and I felt some real peace. Okay, avoid comparing. Oops, I got that in there twice. And again, just a change of scenery. So take a minute. Again, the, I've thrown a lot out at you guys. This isn't to overwhelm you, but what, if anything, might you want to try in regards to communicating with yourself or doing something kind for yourself. I almost hesitate to say this, but I don't want to throw the flow off. Something I forgot to share with you guys. Um, I have a client who I work with. She's wonderful. Back up in our notes when I, when I was discussing who can you reach out to for support, she was going through a really rough time. She called everybody who has people available 24 hours for prayer. So radio stations, um, focus on the family. I've called them before. They actually have counselors that you can talk to for free. Uh, you have to schedule an appointment and they'll call you back. But those people on the front lines, they're there to talk to you and probably pray pray with you. So, you know, sometimes it's in the middle of the night or whatever. You know, I encourage you to reach out to these places with prayer lines. Those are some people you could reach out 